Draft Garage and today we're going to do a little bit more work on the 39 Mercury that we pulled out of Jersey last summer. So uh, now that we got the engine in, we got it to run on just our little temporary gas tank and kind of confirmed that everything seems okay. I shifted the trans, moved it around in the driveway and well we're ready to start making it a car now. So first thing that we found on all these old survivor type cars is um, it's, a, it's a losing battle when you try and use the original gas tank that's in them if they've sat with old gas in them. It's pretty much impossible unless you have a way to cut them open and blast them or, or bake them out. Um, it is really difficult to get them clean and you'll have problems with carburetors getting clogged. So we usually, if we can get a gas tank, we just put a new gas tank in it. So what we're gonna work on in this video today is, is two separate things. So number one, we're gonna work on getting this gas tank mounted in the car. Luckily on 39 to 40 Mercury's, they actually, like a lot of the Mercury and Lincoln stuff, they were a year or two ahead of the Ford products. So the Mercury's actually use what is typically called a, you know, the 46 to eight or 42 to eight, 41 to eight, whatever, um, gas tanks. Basically, they are the same as what 39, 40 Mercury use, they do not use the 37 to 9 Ford tank. So went ahead and ordered a reproduction tank for this. So we're gonna put this up in the air, get that out. We're also gonna do a little bit of work on the suspension while we have the car up in the air, maybe take a couple leaves out of the rear and uh, see if we can get the back end of this thing sitting a little bit better. And, uh, and yeah, see if we can get it to run on the gas tank, which is the most important thing of this. We'll have to do a bunch of work to get that going. So let's get to work. So we got the car up in the air and you can see the gas tank that is under here. Um, and it looks like, we didn't show a ton of this car underneath yet, but we believe uh, this car was actually well cared for during its life. Um, and it looks like at some point in its life, they had some like aftermarket like rust proofing or undercoating sprayed on the car. Like everything's kind of covered in that underneath, which luckily did kind of save from sitting where it was sitting in that kind of like sandy, sand floor garage, it, it, it did help uh, keep it rust uh, proofed or keep it from rotting out. But this gas tank, uh, we actually saw was already leaking. That's gross fuel right there coming out. So regardless if we wanted to save it, it's already leaking probably from the front seam somewhere. So um, basically on these, uh, this style gas tank, there's a couple bolts here with brackets that you can't really, it's really hard to see. And then there's one here with like a spring bolt um, that Ford often use. So we gotta take those out and then we could kind of slide the tank forward a little bit and then uh, drop it out. And obviously we gotta disconnect all the gas line and stuff. The one little problem is we don't have a key still for that gas cap. So we're gonna have to pull the whole neck out and then try and extract that cap off. We have another one in the trunk we can use, but that's gonna be a little bit of fun. So um, this is gonna get a little messy and hopefully we don't stink the whole shop up with old fuel. <laughs>
All right, so we finally got the gas tank out. It fought us and the captive nuts. Uh, of course, there's like at every point a captive nut on these gas tanks on this style and they almost always spin. So we had, I don't know, what, three, four of them? Yep. That spun. <laughs> um, you can see here, Steve actually had to knock off the tabs on them. A lot of times what we do is we just go back with these with these riv nuts, they're pretty good, and uh, we put them back in, and then we have a nice new, we're not reusing junky old nuts. So it always breaks these tabs because they end up spinning, so you kind of have to do something anyway. So we're gonna put those riv nuts in on those brackets. Um, the new gas tank has some of them already on it here. So we're good there. Underneath it's surprisingly clean. That brown that you see that may on the camera seem like rust, that's actually the original red oxide primer. I see a little better there. There's not too much rust, there's a little bit here. So we'll end up, what we'll do is we'll just uh, wire brush that stuff. We'll use some Eastwood Rust Encapsulator because it's nothing major and it'll just seal it up from getting any worse. This isn't like a frame off resto so we can't get in there and blast all that or anything. So that will do for now. Um, and yeah, so we're gonna clean all that up. We gotta do some wiring repair because this wiring is all kind of poor in here and worn, worn away. And, Junkie, we found that this this uh, fuel line is all rusty and was leaking throughout, um, and we got to get the fuel neck out. But good progress. Oh, also, we got to clean this spring off. I feel like we're going backwards back to when we were working on Beautiful. <laughs> Steve's laughing over there. Yeah, Beautiful, we were covered in grease head to toe, but this one isn't as bad, so we'll get that cleaned as well. So we got a bunch of work to do before we can put the new tank in, but uh, just good to get the berth of the old tank out of the way. Probably good. Just enough to get the bolt out, you mean? Yeah, and slip some leaves out. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good? Okay. Yeah, that should be fine. Alright, and that's, that's what, a square nut on top? Yeah, yeah, I usually just use, I think it might be a 9 16 or half inch okay. wrench. Or you can just use vice versa. Gee. All right, we're going to get a bigger wrench. We'll get your impact. Yep. All the way off? Yep. Oh, there's a washer. One right here. That would be it. 
theory, you should be able to just leave that clamp on. Just okay, I see it separating clamps. there. And it'll keep those ones together. Yep. And then we only have to compress the, the ones that, you know, the ones that we put back on. Right. We're almost through all of them with that pin, but we want to go a little more. Just keep holding that pin in. Yep. I think it is actually helping it from.
All right, so we got the gas tank all mounted in. Steve kind of did the wrestling around to get everything mounted, and um, he repaired those threaded inserts that were in the back mounts that we talked about earlier. Um, got a brand new fuel line made. We decided after we took it all apart, the fuel line was all crusty, and luckily as soon as he took it out of the car, it started leaking uh, where it was like pinholes, so um, good, good reason to replace the fuel line. So he put a new fuel line all the way front to back, um, steel fuel line, put the ferrules on it, tightened it down, um, got our drain plug all tightened down with that, that special blue sealant we've been using on the Schomburg carburetors, it seems to work well, and uh, fought and got the filler neck in end of the day yesterday. This is uh, that cool new gas cap that we have a key for now, so I gotta get a keychain to keep all these keys organized. So uh, we're pretty much ready to put fuel in this thing and see if we can get the fuel pump to pull fuel and run off the gas tank. I just went out and got um, five gallons of fuel and a battery for this thing, a six volt battery, and Steve already got all the battery cables done. So we're gonna see if we can get this thing on the ground and get it running on its new fuel tank. Here we go. That battery. I did find the special screw on the workbench. I was very happy about that. Really? Nice. We now you just gotta find a cap. I know. <laughs> it's probably out by the tractor. Today. Yeah, I was just think I was thinking the same thing. We gotta go out and kick around in the yard a little bit. That or it's on the shelf of coming and going parts outside. Oh, right. Yep. Could be there too. Anything? Nope. So far so good. Okay. I got three gallons, two gallons in. Man, right. so he probably hasn't put fuel in this thing since. Right, well, yeah, when was the last time you think this was? 90s, I think they said. <laughs> been a little while. It doesn't seem like it's that long ago, but it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, you gotta keep the tank full all times just to keep the SN. Right, right, yeah, to make it look cool. Alright, that's it. That's it. She's still dry. Good. Love it. Absolutely. Step one complete. Yeah. <laughs> well, you usually pour, you usually pour a couple. Games. I hear you. I hear you. I'm not. You got the button on. I got the button on. Yeah, it's gonna need more. It's gonna need more spray. It is. I haven't got any fuel.
All right, so finally some stuff went our way or wasn't difficult and we got this thing running and idling on the fuel tank. But what you guys may have heard Steve talk about that he was a little worried about, that brand new tank, probably from manufacturing, has some junk inside of it. So you can see the bottom of the glass bowl here. Um, that, that heavy sediment or, or big chunks are going to the bottom. So things it's doing what it's supposed to. So we're gonna have to take this off and empty uh, empty that out and then uh, keep an eye on it and make sure. But it's pro I'm, I'm pretty confident it's probably just that new tank had some stuff from manufacturing. So, but yeah, got the thing running. Everything's looking good. We're gonna set it down now for the first time and see what it's like with the leaves we took out. And uh, hopefully the back end drops a little bit like we want. And uh, that's our last surprise here. And then we should be done for this little project. All right, let's see what she does. Now. So, uh, very successful uh, update on the 39 Mercury project. Uh, Steve did a ton of hard work to get the gas tank in and get all that stuff hooked up again with a new fuel line. And we're really happy we ended up replacing the whole fuel line instead of just assuming it was okay. Um, and uh, as you guys heard in the last couple shots, we got it to run and idle uh, after getting the fuel to pull up. Started in idle and ran probably the best it's ever run because we didn't have our janky gas tank and all that stuff set up. So. Um, uh, now that we got that done, uh, you saw obviously we got it to drop down. We took a few leaves out of the rear. It's sitting a little better. We're going to probably take one or two leaves out of the front just to get it down just a tiny bit, just to get it to sit right, like all my cars to, to sit sit right. They, they got to sit right. So uh, I know some people that are purists are going to be a little angry, but hey, it's all... Uh, it's all fun. So um, now we got all that done. We're going to work on the background. Um, Steve's going to do a little bit of work on doing some of the wiring. That's just the wiring overall is pretty decent, but there's some stuff in the engine bay for the charging system where pieces were added or mended and they need to be gone over. So we're going to replace a bunch of that wiring. Go over the whole entire car as far as the wiring goes. There's some stuff by the taillights that need to be uh, fixed up. And I think we could save this harness without going through a full uh, replacement of the harness on this one. Um, and then once we get all that stuff done, we can put the hood back on, start moving it around, and uh, we're gonna start working on the brakes. So the end of this winter through February, uh, we're gonna focus on this car as far as uh, one of our major projects and get it running, starting, stopping, steering, all that stuff going. And uh, so then in the spring, hopefully, fingers crossed, we can start cruising this thing around. So thank you guys for following along. Really appreciate it. Catch you later.